Hi, this is Sarah Wilkinson from the University of Guelph Humber and Humber College, and in this two-part video series, I will cover the cardiac cycle. In this first part, I'll go over details about pressure and valves, and in the second video, I will go over the cardiac cycle proper. So what is the cardiac cycle? It is a series of mechanical events that moves blood through the heart and out to the body. In this first part of the video, I'm going to define pressure. I'm going to talk about the importance of heart valves, the chordae tendinia, and papillary muscles. And I'm going to go over how differences in pressure govern valve opening, closing, and blood flow. If you feel comfortable with these topics, you can skip ahead to part two, which I will go over some detailed terminology in the cardiac cycle phases, and then I'll finally go through the events of the cardiac cycle. It may be worth your while to watch part one, even if you're comfortable with it, because I'm going to just throw around terminology in the second part. So let's get started. I'm expecting you to know your heart anatomy, and instead of me going over it in detail here, I'm going to point you toward an excellent heart anatomy YouTube video by osmosis.org. I will link it in the top right hand corner. Please make sure you're familiar with heart anatomy before continuing. Pressure is the force exerted by molecules within a given volume. So if we have this chamber here with three molecules in it, it's going to exert a certain amount of force. If we add more molecules to it, more force will be exerted. So when we talk about blood pressure, we're talking about the force of blood on the walls of blood vessels and heart chambers. I have another video on this that will cover it in detail that I'll link up here on the top right hand corner if you want to know more about pressure volume relationships. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to discuss two main factors that will impact blood pressure. Please note there are other factors than what I'm discussing here. The first one is how much blood is in the chamber. So on the left we have three molecules, whatever that represents, exerting a certain amount of pressure. If we add more blood in the same volume, this is going to increase the pressure. So as you can see here, as we add more blood to our chamber, the pressure goes up. The second factor that's important in understanding the cardiac cycle as it relates to pressure is the size of the chamber. So here we've got a chamber that's quite large that has a certain amount of blood in it. If we decrease the size of the chamber but maintain the volume, this is going to increase the pressure. Just changing the size of the chamber without changing the blood volume increases pressure. This is a typical diagram of a heart. I have redrawn just the left hand side so we can focus on just the veins, atrium, ventricle, and the large artery leaving. Please note that all these events are taking place on the right hand side at the same time, but let's just focus in on the left. This video is not all about anatomy accuracy. It's about understanding the cardiac cycle. If you would like to have proper anatomy accuracy, please go to your textbook, but we'll go over some basics so you can understand the pathway of blood. So what I've drawn here is the left hand side of the heart. The top chamber is the atrium, remember plurals, atria, and the bottom chamber is the ventricle. Blood vessels delivering blood to the atrium are called veins. So here I've drawn two, two pulmonary veins, there are more than that. And blood vessels leaving the ventricle are called arteries. And here I've shown you the one large artery leaving the ventricle, the aorta. Dividing the atrium and the ventricle is an AV valve, atrial ventricular valve. And separating the ventricle from the large artery leaving the heart is called a semilunar valve. Please note there's an AV valve and a semilunar valve on the right hand side of the heart as well and everything will look identical except for the type of veins and type of artery leaving. The next thing we need to talk about, and you probably already know this intuitively, is that blood it will flow from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure. And this happens when the valves are open. Valves are super important in that they ensure blood flows in only one direction. So as you can see here, we have blood coming in from the veins into the atrium. From the atrium, they're going to flow in one direction to the ventricle, and then from the ventricle out into the artery. If blood flows in the opposite direction, that is problematic. What will open the AV valves is when pressure in the atria becomes greater than pressure in the ventricle. I've represented that with the size of these circles, these red P circles. And as you can see, as pressure goes up in the atria because blood is accumulating, 
the atrioventricular valves will open and blood will be able to flow into the ventricle. As pressure goes up in the ventricle and becomes greater than pressure in the aorta, semilunar valves will open. So for both the atrial ventricular and semilunar valves, what causes them to open is when pressure becomes greater in one chamber and blood forces the valves open. So the next thing we need to look at is what closes the valves. Again, blood flows from areas of high to low pressure. And how this works is that blood gets trapped in the cusps of the valves and closes them. Let's take a closer look at this. Here we have a ventricle that's contracting. It is forcing the blood up and against the AV valves. And as it does that, it gets trapped in the small little cusps and those cusps shut. The atrial ventricular valves closing is the first heart sound you actually hear when you're listening to a heart beat. A similar thing happens for the semilunar valves. So again, blood is going to flow from areas of high pressure in the aorta to an area of low pressure in the ventricle as it relaxes. As it flows back towards the heart, it will become trapped in the cusps of the valve and they will shut. That is the second heart sound, the dup, that you hear when you're listening to a heartbeat. So remember earlier when I said when the ventricle contracts, it closes the atrial ventricular valves. Two important structures are responsible for making sure that those atrial ventricular valves don't blow up into the atrium, and that is called prolapse. So the chordae tendinia and the papillary muscles are going to prevent the AV valves from prolapsing, i.e. blowing back up into the atrium and blood being pumped back into the atrium. So as you can see here, this is your AV valve that's open. Attached to it are tendinous cords that will pull tight when the ventricle is contracting. Currently it's open here. And those are attached to papillary muscles when the heart is contracting. To show you this, there's a beautiful open source Wikimedia Commons animation I'm going to show you that will demonstrate how the papillary muscles contracting as the ventricles contract, pull on the chordae tendinia to prevent the AV valves from flying back up into the atrium and blood being pushed the wrong way. You'll also be able to see in this video the semilunar valves opening, blood leaving the ventricle. In this video, the left semilunar valves aren't shown, they'll be tucked right in here, so you'll be able to see the right AV valves, chordae tendinia, papillary muscles, and the semilunar valve that controls entry of blood into the pulmonary trunk, which is the other large artery. So they both work the same way. So you'll see two AV valves and one semilunar valve, and the other one's just tucked right in back there. And this is courtesy of Dr. Jana Official. It's a Creative Commons video. Every vi image and video I ever use in my own videos are Creative Commons and they're always linked. So you can find that on Wikimedia Commons if you want to have a look at it. It's pretty cool. As the heart contracts, the papillary muscles contract, pulling on the chordae tendinia and blocking these valves from flying up. You'll also see the semilunar valves opening to allow blood being injected from the right ventricle. Without naming any of the phases of the cardiac cycle, I just want to go over pressure and flow relationships. In the next video, I will name all of these phases, but let's just put together what we know about pressure, what we know about the size of the chamber, and what we know about amount of blood in the chamber and how that governs valve opening and closing. Here I've drawn the left side of the heart again, with atria and ventricle. And where we're starting is just after the ventricle has relaxed. The ventricle is in diastole, which I'll explain what systole and diastole is in the next video. We've had blood accumulating in the left atrium. So here it's coming in from the pulmonary veins, and we have blood starting to accumulate. 
This is going to increase the pressure in the atria compared to the ventricle. As that pressure builds up, eventually the atrial ventricular valves are going to open up and will, blood will flow passively with gravity into the ventricle. So this is just passive flow coming in from the pulmonary veins into the atria and it will be passively flowing. The next phase will involve the atria contracting. The atria are going to contract and they're going to push the rest of the blood into the ventricle so that it's all filled just before it contracts. The next stage is for the ventricles to contract, pushing the blood up against the cusps, closing them, and the pressure is going to continue to build and build and build as the chamber becomes smaller and smaller. We have the same amount of blood, but the chamber has become smaller, so pressure is increasing. That pressure increase is going to open the semilunar valves, but not the atrial ventricular valves because the papillary muscles pulling on the chordae tendinia are keeping them closed. So there goes the blood through the semilunar valves and out into the aorta from high pressure to low pressure. Once the blood has been ejected, and the ventricles begin to relax, the pressure drops in the ventricle compared to the aorta. So what's gonna happen is the blood is gonna move from areas of high pressure to low pressure again, and catch in the cusps, closing the semilunar valves. And off the blood will go to the rest of the body and we can start again. So let's review what we've covered in part one before moving on to part two, where we'll cover the actual named events and what's specifically going on in the cardiac cycle. To review, Blood pressure is the force of blood on the walls of blood vessels and heart chambers. Blood flows from areas of high to low pressure through open valves. Blood catching in valve cusps closes them. And the chordae tendinia and papillary muscles prevent prolapse of the AV valves.